leads of the Mexican Revolution, uh, Dr. Cordova's um, father, a uh, truly outstanding uh, academic. And uh, like his son, uh, part scholar and part activist, and here is uh, Dr. Lorenzo Cordova. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I, I, sure. uh, I, I have the honor. Ah, okay, please. No, <laughs> I, I have the honor of, of, of introducing you, of introducing Dr. Cordova. For those of you who might not know much about uh, the INE that, that he presides and uh, and himself, um, and uh, like my colleague uh, Professor Gomez Jimenez said, we are indeed fortunate and uh, and very very pleased that he chose uh, to be here at our university. Uh, Dr. Lorenzo Cordova holds two doctorates, um, a JD from the UNAM um, in uh, political theory um, and uh, a PhD um, in international law uh, from, um, from Italy. Uh, he also you know, has a very distinguished career in his own right, both in academia, journalism, and now public service. He is research fellow at the Instituto de Investigaciones Jurídicas, I should say tenured research fellow at, uh, at, at the Instituto de Jurídicas, um, currently of course on leave, and a member of Mexico's very distinguished national system of researchers, level three, which is the highest level that one can achieve. Um, he, he's been the recipient of various uh, prizes and recognitions, such as from the UNAM, um, uh, the National University for Young Scholars uh, of the Year. Uh, he's the author of various books, articles, and essays on constitutional law, electoral themes, and political theories. Among his books are Derecho y Poder, Elecciones, Dinero y Corrupción, a very timely book uh, today, <laughs> as we know. Uh, Los Árbitros de las Elecciones Estatales, Una Radiografía de Su Arquitectura Institucional, and his co-edited books are Repensar a, a Fabio, La Reforma Electoral 2007 Hacia un Nuevo Modelo. Reforma y, con, y Control de la Constitución, Implicaciones y Límites Hacia una Ley de Partidos Políticos. He has also written innumerable newspaper articles and uh, scientific uh, journal articles. Um, he was twice the recipient of the Premio Nacional de Periodismo, that is the National Prize for Journalism, granted by um, the, the Club of Journalists of Mexico. He was a member of the task force of the Mexican Senate on Political Reform in 2010, and in 2011 to 2014, um, he was a member of uh, Mexico's Chamber of Deputies, appointed him as Consejero Electoral of the former Instituto Federal Electoral, the IFE, and in 2014, uh, Mexico's Chamber of Deputies appointed him as president um, of the General Council of the newly created Instituto Nacional Electoral, which is an autonomous agency in charge of organizing not only federal elections and co-organizing state and local elections throughout Mexico. Certainly, the IME is one is most assuredly one of the most influential and probably difficult uh, political institutions in Mexico today. So it's a great honor for me. I also have to take a personal note, uh, like Professor Gomez Quinones, and say that his father, Arnaldo Cordova, was absolutely critical um, in my formation. Um, he adopted me as a young doctoral student, and we held a friendship for over 30 years. Um, and I think Lorenzo is following very much in his footsteps. So without further ado, it's my honor to present to you Lorenzo Cordova. Thank you very much. I have to appreciate a lot the invitation to be here. This is my second time here at UCLA. And uh, uh, by the second time, I've been invited by David Maciel, uh, your friend, your family friend. And I was, uh, a very respectful professor. I'd like to thank, and it's a pleasure to meet you, Juan, 
uh, friend, intellectual friend of the, my family. And thank you very much uh, for, uh, for uh, the opportunity to uh, talk of a very simple issue, no? how uh, Ife has been transformed to Ine, uh, how reasons, uh, which reasons are uh, uh, besides this uh, uh, transformation, and uh, what happens last year uh, in the first election uh, uh, in charge of Ine, and uh, what's the purpose of uh, the visit of a very uh, important team of the uh, Ines team here in Los Angeles, uh, besides the beginning uh, of a very important uh, uh, phase of the uh, and, and conquest of uh, Mexican uh, people uh, uh, abroad, Mex abroad Mexico. Um, I'm not quite sure if I have to go on in English. Uh, David uh, asked me that, and to me it's a, very, a great opportunity to uh, you know, shake my very rusted English, uh, but I'm, I, I also, I, I'm not quite sure that my rough English could be able to uh, transmit to you plenty the points of complexity of these three issues, which are, I, uh, from my point of view, very important. Uh, so, but, but I, 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 yeah, I speak in Spanish by yeah. all means. <laughs> okay, if there is no problem because I, 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 I couldn't exclude uh, anybody for, 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 the, for, the, for the speech. Well, anyway, uh, uh, you can use Spanish. Spanish is okay too. Okay, okay <laughs> great. <laughs> I hope my Spanish is better than my Spanish. Anyway, James, thank you very much. No, uh, uh, pido una disculpa, tal vez es más sencillo. Los temas son muy largos y la idea que me ha pedido David eh, son profundos y, los, y la idea de David era poder generar un espacio de interlocución. Si eh, eh, con el, el español, mi español que es un poco más fluido que mi inglés, eh, puedo aprovechar algo, ahorrar tiempo para poder dedicarlo a la interlocución con ustedes, para mí es como decía un viejo profesor, oro molido. Eh, el, el, Como ustedes saben, en México el, la, la, la vía electoral eh, eh, fue la ruta a partir de la cual eh, eh, se articuló el cambio político en clave en democratizadora. Eh, eh, desafortunadamente no todos los ámbitos de la vida política y social han avanzado con los ritmos y con la velocidad que lo ha hecho el tema electoral, que si bien sigue siendo controversial en muchos sentidos, Eh, por mucho constituye el, el, la columna vertebral que ha articulado y detonado muchos de los cambios que hoy se viven en el país. Eh, eh, con esto no pretendo señalar que la democracia mexicana es ni de lejos una democracia acabada. Eh, creo que hay muchos ámbitos eh, eh, que todavía re, 